and salah or the fiqh of salah, the rulings of salah, they pertain to the conditions of salah, the prerequisites, and the arkan of a salah, i.e. the fundamental pillars and ob obligations of salah, and the wajibat of salah, the obligations of salah, and then the sunan of salah, which, is the, which are the recommended, encouraged actions within the salah, and then finally the mubtilat, those matters which invalidate the salah. So what are the conditions or the prerequisites of a salah? The conditions of salah, they have to be fulfilled external to the salah. And as for the fundamental pillars of salah, they are within the salah. Similar to this, the wajibat are within the salah. As for the condition, it is before the salah, but it has to be maintained throughout the salah. And as for the rukan, which is the fundamental pillar, then it is a small section of the salah. So wudu, is it from the conditions of salah? Is it from the pillars of salah? Is it before salah or inside salah? If you have to make wudu before the salah, then this is a condition. And also, when it comes to wudu, does a person have to maintain wudu throughout the whole salah? Yes. And therefore, it's a condition of the whole salah. As for the pillars of salah, then like the statement, Allahu Akbar in takbiratul ihram. And so, takbiratul ihram, this statement, Allahu Akbar, it's a pillar, but it finishes as soon as you have verbalized it. Unlike the wudu, which has to extend throughout the salah. So this is one of the differences between a shart, a condition, and a rukan, a fundamental pillar of salah. That the shart is a prerequisite which is external to the salah. It has to be fulfilled before the salah. And as for the rukan, then it is a part of the salah. And what is common and shared between the rukan and the shart is that if a person forgets and does not do or does not perform a condition or a pillar, then that forgetfulness is not an excuse. He has to repeat the prayer. So if a person prayed salah without wudu, we say his salah is invalid. Even if he was forgetful or he did it intentionally, if he was ignorant, no difference, the salah is invalid. He made salah, he prayed salah and he did not make sujood. We say the salah is invalid. Whether he was ignorant or forgetful or if he did it intentionally, the salah is invalid. As for the wajibat, the obligations of salah, and the wajibat, they resemble the arkan, the pillars. So the difference between the rukan and the wajibat is that for the wajibat, forgetfulness or ignorance is an excuse which is accepted. And, it, and in this case, it does not invalidate the salah. As for the rukan and the sharf, as we mentioned, forgetfulness and ignorance is not an excuse which is accepted. If a person abandons the first tashahud, and the first tashahud is an obligation. If he was forgetful or he was ignorant, the prayer is valid. However, if he intentionally abandoned it, then the salah is invalid. If a person abandoned the last tashahud, then the salah, it is invalid regardless of whether he was forgetful or ignorant or he did it intentionally.